Welcome to week three, VLab 2, also known as Lab 6, creating and scheduling backup and replicating system folders. Uh, part of this lab is dealing directly with DFS, distributed file systems, and name shares. So I'm already on our VLab 2 setting. Here are the lab instructions. Here are the deliverables. When you're ready to begin, go and access VLab. I'm using Chrome. You may get a pop-up or two uh, for Java. Go ahead and allow them. This, I've been noticing today, has just been really slow, so be patient. It can take anywhere between a few minutes and several minutes to load, so again, just be patient. Just a little heads up, if you get this option, your lab infrastructure has not fully loaded yet, so wait until this goes away. It will actually go away when all of the virtual machines are loaded. So again, just be patient, give it time. Okay, so it took a little bit for my infrastructure to load, but it finally loaded. So I've skipped these steps, like prepping the, your lab document. You guys can do that. I'm doing part one, installing Windows DFS and creating network shares. So we're going to go ahead and open up our Windows 01, that's going to be our uh, server one. For whatever reason, we're our author of our lab is very pro doing everything via PowerShell. I've noticed once it loads, just give it a second, close any of the pop-ups that you get, and go ahead and open up PowerShell. We are going to be installing our DFS namespace and replication and all console requirements for our DFS share through PowerShell. So how we do that is, oh, I'm sorry, I went ahead, I forgot it doesn't auto do this for us, run this run me in PowerShell first, so right click on it, run with PowerShell. That's going to go ahead and set up most of our lab infrastructure. I always forget that we have to do that because it doesn't do it for us. Okay, now that that's ran, open up PowerShell. I do apologize for that. So how we're going to be installing our DFS namespace through PowerShell is we type install Windows feature, it's a file system, DFS, namespace. Space, we're going to do a hyphen, and we're going to include all sub features. In real life, you would not do that. You will not Again, in real life, you don't do this. You do it through normally the GUI because you want to select specific sub-features. I fat-fingered. Oh, I misspelled include. Include all sub-features. And there we go. With PowerShell, you have to make sure you're doing all the correct spelling. And I fat-finger things sometimes. Uh, with all sub-features installed, one of the problems is it actually increases the attack surface of your server. Because if you're doing features that you're not going to be using with RDFS, then all this does is uh, provide additional attack space. Uh, what we did was we just set up our namespace service. Uh, if you think of our, our namespace as like the libraries in Windows 7 and Windows 8, for example, the music library. Even though within music there are several subfolders, they don't have to be in the same location. But we, the end user, when we click on music, it shows all music in one centralized area. That's namespace. So now that we did our namespace, we're going to go ahead and install our replication. 
by deleting the word namespace and typing in replication. And again, include all sub features. Once that's done, we're going to do the same thing, except we're going to be doing our RSAT management console. So no, no longer doing our file share, because we actually need to be able to see our console. So that's going to be RSAT, and that's going to be our DFS. And that's going to be our console. And go ahead and hit enter. And okay, it did not like that. Oh, that's because I totally fat fingered. What console are we doing? We're doing the management console. So it should be rsat hyphen dfs hyphen management hyphen console. Uh, management and console are both. Uh, shortened so they're not like management okay so that's one of the negative sides of our PowerShell make sure you're doing mgmt hyphen console you're going to actually run the command it does not like that let's try doing that one more time Hyphen MGMT. There it goes. Again, it doesn't matter how you get these services installed, as long as you get them installed. Okay, so once our three features are installed, we're going to go ahead and change to our traditional command. So you can do that by just typing CMD. So from here, we're actually going to make an archive directory mkdir space the location that you want to create it I want to make it on the, the root of C drive and I want to call it archive so once we make it I want to go ahead and share it then how we do that is type net share space the name of the share equals the location of the share that way if we want to call it backups and we want it to actually be pointed to the folder archives. That's how we. Uh, that's how that would work. Space. We actually want to grant certain permissions. So how we do that is after we do the name equals the location space forward slash grant colon the user we want to grant the permissions for comma what permissions so that way we were able to do a net share archive that's the name of our share equals the location of our share space forward slash we're granting the ability for administrator and he has full permissions so what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and hop over to our second server and we're actually going to install our replication you may get a name pop-up that's okay just go ahead and click on yes that's just saying hey the name on the certificate is not the same name as the server that's all good so here we're only installing our replication not our namespace in real life we would be doing namespaces on both that way if one fails the other one would automatically kick in but our lab doesn't require that so we're not going that far so what we do is we're going to install windows nope I'm fat fingering things today windows feature our FS DFS replication I'm going to include all sub features
And once that's done, we're gonna go ahead and gonna go ahead and do the two shares again. Or sorry. We're gonna create the, the share and then actually share the share. So we're not doing two shares, it'll just be one. But we're gonna do both steps again. Uh, so what I'm trying to do when I do this lab, I've used DFS quite often, and so I'm trying to put some more real life here, because there are some things that this lab just doesn't quite do well. Okay, so, once it's done, we're going to swap over to our command prompt, and we're going to go ahead and make directory location and we're going to go into our share and again location space forward slash we're granting administrator oh, administrators full permission and we are done with this so what we're gonna do now we're gonna go on to part two configuring our DSF so let's go ahead and minimize our second server and let's go ahead and go back to server one okay so back on server one okay so we're gonna go ahead and close out of I'm going to maximize our RDP session, server 1, exit out of PowerShell, and we're going to go ahead and open up our DFS management. So how we do that is server manager. Again, I'm going to be pointing out certain things the way that the lab makes us do it versus how you do it in real life and how they're separate. So I do apologize for that. Tools, DF management, or DFS management, sorry click on namespace you'll notice there are no namespace servers currently here we're actually going to go new namespace we're going to browse and we're going to type in our namespace server two thousand twelve dc and there is our server we're going to call this backup well, backups I believe okay so this is where it's going to kind of deviate our lab instructions say next in real life we're going to be editing our settings so again in real life edit settings location of our shared folder if we leave it see it will put our shared folders within our backup folder and DFS root. It will actually create that share. That's okay if you have a, one, a hard drive server, but in real life what I've noticed is most people will change the path here to like D, and then that where they'll put their backups. You also will do your permissions here. but our lab instructions don't say that so just hit next we're doing a domain namespace that means it's going to be the domain name slash the name of our namespace so that way if we have if we type in slash slash our domain name slash our namespace it will pop up here our domain name is securelabsondemand.com slash our namespace is called backups remember earlier when we set up our namespace service on server one but we did not do it on server two so what that means is server one is the only one hosting our namespace that is a bad idea and this is why if server one goes down access to this share also goes down because the share 
is shared. Hmm, shares. The share is shared on server 1. If the namespace was installed on server 1 and server 2, the namespace would still be available. What I mean with that is, if namespace service is started on both server 1 and server 2, if either server goes down, the namespace stays up as long as one of the servers is up. Also, we have the ability to control well, if you're in this network, you access this namespace. If you're in that network, you access that namespace. Or, round robin, everyone just connects to the namespace, and whatever server responds first, that's where you get your responses. But, people always ask, well, how, is, how does the data, I mean, how do we make sure that the data is the same all over the place? Section 3 of this lab is going to show replication and that's how we force replication between our DFS's. That way we can have a namespace and our namespace is replicated between different servers. That way each server will have the same data. You can do things like uh, settling up or setting up schedulers so that if you want to conserve bandwidth we're not going quite that far. That's more in the DFS management. It's just best practice you install namespace services on both your servers. You install replication on both of them. And you point them at one another. That way, you have the availability. If one goes down, the other one's up. And because of the replication, they're identical data. So I, I wanted to point that out, because that, that's a big thing that our lab left out. So here we're leaving it domain-based. That way it's going to be our domain slash our share. And when you're ready, go ahead and click on next. Look at the settings, make sure. Again, I disagree with that, but I'm going to leave it alone. Go ahead and click on create. And our namespace server in a second should be good. Our namespace was created successfully. So underneath our namespace, we'll see our server. And here is our path. So how do we actually add in our folders and our, our things like that? So how we're going to do that is we're actually going to tell it a new folder and we're going to give it the addresses for our to machines. Again, this is a weird way to do things. Oh, that was my bad. Name. We're going to call this archive. We're going to create two of our shares, and here they are. I put the address where the dang name should have gone. Wasn't paying attention. 015 slash archive 172.30.0.15 slash archive. We're going to do the same thing except this time on 18 and OK. Here's our server 1, here's our server 2, and there we're good. Click OK. Do we want to set up a replication group? So after we added it, we actually do want to do our replication group. Nice thing with DFS is it's uh, lizard driven, so this will set up our replication. We don't have to do it individually. Here are our two members. That's good. What's going to be the primary server? I'm going to set it at the DC1. Do we want it a full mesh? Do we want it a hub and spoke? 
How do we want our replication to work? Full mesh will happen as anything within that namespace will replicate to everyone else. That way if you wanted to control like one master and then that gets pushed out to everyone else, it just kind of depends. That was one master would have been a hub and spoke. So we're going to next. How much bandwidth do we want? How much uh, do we want to make a schedule? Do we want it to replicate instantly or do we want it to replicate only after business hours? It just kind of depends on your situation. Double check our settings. They're going to replicate back and forth to one another. That's right. And that is our replication. It will not begin until it's picked up by the other member. So what that means is we created the replication on server 1. We see it. There it is. So, I'm, again, this isn't in the lab. This is an additional step. So, I'm going to go over to server 2. I actually want to make sure that this is working. So, I'm going to go open up DFS Manager on the other one. But, we didn't install the management console we only installed replication so we don't get that option DFS so that's the management console we don't get anything on server 2 so how are we going to verify let's go over to our archive folder Let's put something there just for a test. I did not do this on server 1. I did this on server 2. I'm going to go ahead and minimize server 2. I'm going to go back over to server 1. Again, pay attention to the address. They should go back and forth. So now let's see if it actually replicated. It hasn't quite replicated just yet. The first time we set this up, it does take a minute or two, so just keep that in mind. So remember earlier when I was talking about real life? Let's go to go back to C drive. Let's go to our DFS root. That's where our DFS set it up. There is our namespace backups. Here is the archive share that we set up. Huh. Notice how we didn't set permissions because the lab did not tell us to. Here is the problem. This is what I was talking about. So you know what? Let's just see if the DFS is working through our domain name like it should. Secure labs. on demand.com forward slash backups so we can see it through a share but our actual replication is not fully functional you have to make sure that you set up our DFS correctly with correct permissions because you're going to have to be able to read and write data back and forth we allowed the shares archives to have administrator full access but when we set up backup we did not it had to skip right through that permissions portion okay so with that go ahead and close out of our DSF management and close out of our server manager so that we just have our desktop. Part 3, Installing and Configuring Windows System Backup. Go and open up PowerShell. 
So how we install this portion is install Windows Windows feature space Windows server backup space hyphen include all sub features again be very careful with the sub features oh let's double check this install windows features install windows feature windows server backup include oh feature not features include all sub feature feature versus features they are different and we're including all sub feature though if you think about it, it should be all include all sub features plural but okay so what we want to do now that we have our Windows Server Backup feature installed. Let's go and exit out of PowerShell. Let's go to our start. Let's try to find backup. Windows Server Backup. You could also still find that under Administrative Tools in Server Manager. It kind of depends on what you want to do. So now that we have this, let's go ahead and create a local backup click on local backup there is nothing here because there was no backup previous so we're going to set up a new backup go and right click on it and we're going to do a backup schedule this is our getting started page what do we want to do do we want to choose all items or do we want to do a custom normally I tell people to do both. A full server backup maybe every Saturday and do a customized backup of data Monday through Friday. Uh, again, this is going to just depending on your situation and your business. Our lab says we want a custom and we want to open and backup just our ER documents. So we're going to add items. Our documents should be underneath C drive, ERP documents, there we go. I know I called them ER documents, they should be our ERP documents. Go and click OK. And when we are ready, go ahead and click on Next. We're going to leave it at 9 p.m. Again, this is going to be more depending on your situation. We're going to choose a destination. We want to back it up to a shared network folder. When we're using our remote share, we will get a warning that we have to have uh, permission and that it will erase previous backups. And that is OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to save it in Okay, so here's another problem with this lab. We're going to save it directly to our server one archive. So this is pointing directly to server one. A better way to do this would be to put it to our namespace. Um, securelabsondemand.com slash backups slash archive that way it's going to go to our DFS either one which is responding and then they'll replicate between the two that way if this server is down you're still going to do your nightly backups so once you've done this go and click on next it should ask you for credentials 
administrator at securelabsondemand.com and put in the appropriate password. and double check our settings. So now let's go ahead and do a backup once. We want to back up once. Schedule backup options, that's fine. This guy. That way we're going to do a backup to our server one archive folder. That way we can verify that the sharing is taking place between the DFSs on the network level, not on our individual drive level. There are many ways to set up our DFS. This will, does take some time to get it used to, because you want to set it up to the best of your ability within your specific circumstances, because they're not always going to be the same. So, go ahead and exit out of our backup manager. Let's verify the files are there. There is our Windows image backup. That's all good. So now let's hop over to server 2. And see if they're there. So just so it address for server 2, archive, and there's our Windows folder backup. You know what, just to make sure, let's do the domain share, just so that we can make sure. securelabsondemand.com slash backups. There's our archive, and there we go. So it does look like anything that is on server 1 is replicating to server 2, but not vice versa. Anything on server 2 is not, arc or n is not backing up to server 1. Add some thing that we're going to have to look into. But you'll notice the Word document that we created isn't there anymore, because it wasn't on server 1, so server 1 is the master. Any changes that are made on one of the subs of it aren't there. So that's uh, something interesting about our DFSs. You have to make sure they are done correctly with the cor uh, correct permissions. Make sure they are done within your specific infrastructure because there are going to be different scenarios that may require different things just depending. Also, you're not limited to one DFS in multiple of our infrastructure that I manage. For one client, I have 15 DFSs for different areas. We have individual company folders that are DFS. We have other items that are DFSs too. Just that way we can have them all replicate to one uh, another between all servers. That way, just in case a server goes down, we have everything still there. Okay, that's the end of this lab, so I want to thank you guys, and hope you guys have a great day. Bye.